feels so good. Right? I'm Anthony Carino. I've built and renovated hundreds of homes over the last decade. I'm renovating an old stone farmhouse in the Catskill Mountains into an income generating vacation home. Holy crap. This is the Build TV, the Stone House Project. So this is the entry room. Um, rather than making this a mud room, what we're gonna do with this room is this is gonna be firewood storage. This will become a concrete floor. We're not looking to heat or cool this room. We're simply gonna add insulation to the ceiling. This entire wall and the entire wall behind me is gonna be stacked floor to ceiling with firewood. I plan on having fires nonstop when it gets cold up here. We have a massive fireplace in the living room. We've got a wood stove we're gonna put in the master bedroom and another wood stove in the three season room. So we're gonna need every bit of wood that we can fit in this room. All right, so we're in the mud room. This will be the proper entrance to the home. Growing up in upstate New York, I know all about how messy the four seasons can be. So the mudroom was a non-negotiable, but Anthony agreed on that. We're going to be doing entry benches here, some coat hooks, some cubbies. I'm going to leave these closets and then we're going to custom fit them out with a closet made interior. But I like these old wood doors. I very much want to keep somewhat of a campy vibe here in the home. Set of doors right here. These will not exist. This will become a wall. The one big note here is that most of this wall is getting knocked back. This wall is going to be eight feet long and stop here. And what that'll do is open the space up quite a bit to the kitchen area. When you're opening up a space and you've got to carry a load from the floor above, the engineer needs to spec a beam that can hold that load and not deflect, which means drop or sag in any way so that you don't have any issues upstairs. And we're also opening the wall up on the other side. So that span is going to be considerable. So we're going to lose all of that as well. So we'll jump into the kitchen, the fun part. I am so excited to design a country kitchen. You know, they call the kitchen the heart of the home for a reason because so many people gather in it. So for me, it's a natural place to start my design because I really want the flow into and out of that space to be fantastic. I'm obsessed with the kitchen because I foresee us hosting most of the major holidays here with our families. And so I'm excited to share that kitchen space with all the family. There are cabinet designers here in the Catskills in Kingston. Cabinet designers is actually the name of the company. <laughs> so they have a beautiful custom line, walnut cabinets. I am very excited. So the rough plan for the kitchen, we're gonna start with full height pantry, full height, 36 inch fridge and then we're going to drop into countertop hey i'm explaining the kitchen so full height pantry full height fridge it's then going to drop into countertop space we're not doing any upper cabinets in this kitchen at all low ceiling height I don't want anything to make it feel lower than it already is. Sink will be underneath the window. Dishwasher will be to the right. And then on this wall, the cooktop or range uh, is going to sit here. We all know JC loves to cook, so we're going to do a 48 inch six burner. And on this wall over here, we're going to go for a double oven setup. Naturally, we go right into the dining area. It's open concept. I will be removing the ceiling fan. We'll be putting in a very cool chandelier here. And the idea is very long live edge table is what I'm thinking. And most importantly, we're going to be getting rid of this. So we're going to open this up completely so we have great flow through down into the living room. This little closet here is going to be laundry. And we're going to frame this out just a little bit depending on the washer dryer I wind up specking to make sure that it fits comfortably in here. We've got our one powder room. Only bathroom currently on the first floor is in here. It is super dark. There's literally nothing to see in this room whatsoever right now. But you know I like a good bold powder room, so we will be having a lot of fun in there. Uh, so that covers it. Entry, kitchen, dining, powder room, laundry. We are set to go and start building this thing back.
I knew I was gonna be working with cabinet designers out of Kingston. I've been driving by their showroom for years. They do fantastic work. I met one of the owners, Jesse. We got to talking about the project and he was super interested. <laughs> That's the welcome committee. <laughs> I had them come out early on and take field measurements because I really wanted to see what was gonna work best for this space. I was gonna do my design iteration, have them do theirs, then we can compare. Cool, man. I'll talk to you. Looking forward okay. to it. Awesome, thank, thank you. you. Good morning, all you happy people. So, today, kitchen, dining room, demolition. While I bought this house in a demoed state, it wasn't completely demoed. And believe me, there was still a ton to get done. <laughs> All right, so at the Cabinet Designer Showroom, we had a private appointment set up for this morning. So they said they had a few iterations for us. Uh, very excited to see what they've got in store. Okay. Hi. I know you like this already. I, do. I know you like this. I do too. I love it. I'm really glad you guys took uh, me to heart when I said do it the way you see fit because it's a way better design than what I came up with. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Really, really, really appreciate it. Yeah. Jess, thank yeah. you, man. Definitely. Really appreciate it. Just the, COVID, the shape during COVID. Yeah, we, like, we went, I know we, where like, the hand we, sanitizer we, is. I'm going to run to it right yeah, now. Yeah, okay. Super, super successful kitchen design meeting. Uh, have the plan here in hand from uh, kitchen designers. We are going to spray out and mark everything that we talked about in the kitchen and just see how it all fits. It always looks awesome on paper and that's exactly why we do this. So here's the update. We've got 52 inches to walk through here, which we're okay with. But we're talking about pulling the pantry out. Instead of the orange line, we're gonna pull it back to the stick. That allows us to move this wall back an extra 18 inches, and then allows that doorway where JC's standing to get way bigger. So now these guys at Cabinet Designers did such a great job. They thought about the kitchen in a way I didn't think about it at all. We got in a peninsula, which I did not have in my design at all. So we've got an extra three seats here. We tried like hell to figure out how to get laundry in here. It's not working. So we're removing the dry pantry storage area from the cabinetry. What was going to be the laundry closet will now be our pantry. We get an 89 inch opening to get from our, sorry, from our mudroom area here. And then as we come into the mud room and we turn completely around, this is where the laundry is gonna go. So laundry will go on this side and then this closet will remain coat storage. So I think we're feeling super good. Yes, Yeah. Amazing. A lot of good ideas from JC on this. You know, sometimes it takes two um, and it's certainly, regardless of how many people, it takes patience and the ability to look at things in multiple ways. A little hard to see the lines, but basically we're cutting these floor joists apart so that the beam, the LVLs can go up into the ceiling. They're 16 inches from top to bottom. So if we put them on the underside of these floor joists, they're gonna stick way into the room and look like crap. We can pick up an extra eight inches by cutting these beams like John's gonna do right now. So there you go, now it all becomes clear, right? Temporary wall on this side to support this side of the beam. Temporary wall on the other side support that side of the beam because now 
It's been cut in two. LVLs with sleeve up there, hidden nice up high in the ceiling. We will still have a little bit dropping down, but not so much of a protrusion that we would have had otherwise. Joist hangers go on both sides to make sure that the existing floor joists don't go anywhere. I've now got a six foot opening that comes from the entryway into the kitchen area. It's just gonna have this central area of the house feel much, much better. Now that we've got that new structural header in place, the space feels absolutely incredible. All the sight lines are exactly what I was hoping they would be, and I'm so excited JC is coming up to check it out. Look who's here. And she brought a guest with her, my soon-to-be mother-in-law. And a new addition with her car hearts yeah, on. Yeah, that's right. All right. <laughs> All right, Ross. Whoa, that feels so good. Right? And then six foot opening. So That's going to stay just like that. That is so awesome. Now that the framing for the kitchen is done, let's talk about materials. There's some stuff that I've picked out that I am really excited to show you guys. A few weeks ago, I headed over to Garden State Tile to discuss the tiles for my kitchen backsplash. So, floors in the kitchen are here. Seven inch wide plank. Beautiful. Really cool, right? Yeah, so bolts and greens, different shapes, different sizes. That's great. Okay. Let's see what we think about this. Oh, dude. I don't know, Chris. I don't know if you need to keep looking. This is really, this is doing it for me. I think, at least for right now, we're going to call that done. Okay. And I'm going to share that with Jace and see where her head's at. Also a few weeks ago, I stopped by a stone yard in Brooklyn to check out some countertops by a company called Neolith. These guys have figured out a way to make beautiful man-made stone countertops that I can't wait to use in our kitchen. This is super freaking cool. Oh man, look at that painting. This is absolutely incredible. When you compare Neolit with natural stone, yeah. there's no other man-made product that compares to natural stone in the way it looks, feels, and performs. You know? People already love natural stone, and they're looking for, okay, I have to deal with this, I have the stains and all of those things. Now, this comes here, a product that looks exactly like natural stone, if not better in some cases, and gives you all those benefits. This is made just like natural stone, but only faster. A full slab of marble weighs like 600 pounds. This is about three pounds a square foot. Two oh. people can pick it up. God, it's both gorgeous, man. It's unbelievable. Uh, oh, man. Now that we've got the framing all wrapped up, we're gonna get into the rough mechanicals, make sure we got all that wire pulled, all those plumbing lines in. That is so I don't have to freeze my ass off when I'm chopping wood in the wintertime. <laughs> Then it's time for spray foam insulation, and then, finally, drywall. Look what has arrived. That, if you cannot tell because it was blurry, are my floors, Cortec flooring. So I've got seven and a half inch wide plank going in the kitchen, dining, hallway area. So, Cortec floors are in. Luxury vinyl plank. These are not the vinyl floors you're thinking of. It actually has wood graining. It is 100% waterproof. Also super pet friendly, not gonna scratch easily at all. You can see we're doing construction in here. I don't have a ton of floor protection down because this stuff is super resilient. Wainscoting is going in. We're all sheetrocked. We're completely primed on all the walls and we're finish coated on the ceilings. We've got our three boxes in uh, for our dining chandeliers. Also, I found the perfect farmhouse dining table for this space with chairs as well. Under this tarp are two of the most beautiful benches you've ever seen. May not look like it yet, but once I'm done sanding and clear coating everything, these things 
are going to look unreal. So this is going to get completely sanded down, 80 grit, 120 grit, 220 grit. And then I've got um, the same poly that I used on the floors in the barn, the Benwood poly. So we'll go ahead and seal this all up. It's going to look gorgeous. Big window going into the dining room today. Huge. Slight improvement over the last one. All right, guys, welcome to the Stone House. So we are in the entry before the entry, which we are affectionately calling the firewood room for obvious reasons. We have two full cords of wood. If you don't know what a cord of wood is, a technical term I believe is a ton of wood. So this room when we bought the house had a dirt floor in it. We ran our utilities underground here and got uh, power and water to the barn. Once we got into construction and we knew we didn't have anything else to do underneath, we poured a concrete slab in here. But not before I set my stump. So we set a stump perfectly level in the concrete floor, perfectly flush with the top of the floor. When I need to chop down our kiln dried logs to either kindling or to fit in the smaller of our two wood stoves that you'll see, I didn't want to freeze my ass off outside. So in here, I've got the heat of the home, I've got my body heat as I chop, and most importantly, I have no wind. I can swing an ax with enough ceiling height and I won't dull my ax by hitting it on a concrete floor, it'll actually hit wood. We've got our custom upholstered bench. This came out of JC's old condo. And we have this gift from my cousin John, establishing the Stonehouse 2020. Welcome to the Carinos. So yeah, that's about it from here. Let's get into the house. Come on in, guys. Welcome to the inside of the stone house. Entry, mudroom area. First thing we gotta start with, our access to the home. Schlage encodes smart lock on the main entry door. You guys know I'm a fan of Schlage. They make a super secure lock. Not only that, you don't have to compromise on aesthetics. Because I liked it so much at the firehouse and because I like the way it works in general, porting it here was an absolute no-brainer. One, I get to keep the same app. Uh, two, it works within the ring environment. And three, it's one less additional app that I've gotta add to my phone. So all in all, absolutely thrilled with the way that lock works. So first thing to notice, the wallpaper. This is the same wallpaper we used in the barn. We wanted to have cohesion between the two spaces. So this is Juju Papers, A View of the Woods. It is one of my all time favorite papers, especially for this environment. We absolutely love it. You'll see it throughout the home in a few different areas. This old antique ice chest is the first piece of furniture my parents bought as a couple and they refinished it together. So it's really super personal and sentimental for us to have here in our entryway. Good design is personal, always remember that. So from there, we've got our bench and cubby area. So we've got hooks for all our jackets. And along with all the code hooks, we've got these massive logs. I had my buddy Harold cut these for me. I just feel like it really fits the environment beautifully. Anchored by a little five by seven rug in the entryway. So we went with Cortec floors. So a couple of great things about this floor. One, it is 100% waterproof. Two, you can do a floating install, which means super DIY friendly. And three, it doesn't need any underlayment at all. I did not want to compromise on aesthetics at all, but I also knew we were gonna have a ton of traffic. This house is meant for entertaining and having people over. These floors can handle it. And then last but not least, we've got our laundry area. So this is the best area we could fit. Full-size stackable GE washer and dryer. We have a ton of laundry to do up here with all the guests and partying and entertaining we're doing. So really nice to have full-size washer and dryer in the house. We've got our color cord fixtures in here. I really wanted to try and use as few recessed lights in this environment as possible. I did have to be careful with what type of fixtures I chose so as not to impact the ceiling height too much. These really shallow flush mount brass color cord fixtures did the job perfectly. And I just love that feel throughout the entirety of the home. It just adds some visual interest to a place where there otherwise wouldn't be any. 
So as we move through, we come right into the kitchen area. This wall used to come all the way out to be flush with this wall, and we had a very small doorway that came through here. We wanted this area of the home opened up so you could see sight lines all the way through and into the living room area, and that's exactly what we accomplished by adding the structural lumber up here. It also opens up the entry into the kitchen. The cabinet designers based out of Kingston, these guys did an incredible job. It's the first time I've gone with a fully custom kitchen. We did inlaid drawers, antique brass hardware, matte black stained finish on the lowers, and then rustic walnut all the way around on the full heights and the open shelves. I could not speak highly enough about these guys. From there, we went to our surfaces, all neolith countertops. It's a sintered stone. It's rocks the way mother nature makes them. But instead of two million years, these guys have figured out how to do it in a matter of two or three hours. High heat, high pressure. Their veining is absolutely beautiful. So yes, it's a man-made stone, which means it's non-porous, which all the benefits that go along with that. But it looks like a true natural stone. From there, Garden State tile, oversized subways. What I did here is a custom blend of glossy and matte green tiles. So I did 70% gloss and 30% matte. It just adds for a lot more dimensionality in the tile install. All the fixtures are Kohler, so we went with their touchless faucet, so you're able to run your hand underneath to start and stop that water flow, and then of course you can turn it on and off like a regular faucet as well. We went with their 36 inch farmhouse apron front sink. And then from there, we've got Kitchler sconces that are shining some additional task lighting down on the countertops. All the appliances throughout the kitchen are Cafe by GE. We went with their matte black finish and then we chose their bronze handles. So we went with the traditional double oven. They do the French door top and the standard bottom and then French door fridge with water inside, bottom freezer, standard 24 inch dishwasher. And then we've got the big boy, the 48 inch range, which JC absolutely loves. I custom designed this hood and worked with the guys at Coppersmith, really cool company. 1200 CFM fan just to pull all the heat and the gas out of the home. And then again, we've got Kohler here, we've got our pot filler, and then we went with the under counter microwave so that we could hide that away, but still have the convenience of the microwave. So moving out of the kitchen area, but still staying very much in the kitchen, we are heading over to our pantry, which is a nice 18 inch wide with pull out shelves. Again, this is all by cabinet designers out of Kingston. And then on this side, you know that I'm a coffee fanatic. So we went and designed a custom hideaway coffee bar. This door sliding back in here, this mechanism was super important to me. I didn't want this door sticking out and blocking people. I just could see it getting broken at a certain point. GE Cafe made the coffee maker as well, so everything has that great cohesive feel to it. And then bouncing back over from the coffee bar, we've got the dining area right behind us. I sourced a really cool old vintage farm table and chairs from Rustic Mountain up in Tannersville. Really great group of people who own that shop up there. Uh, these stools actually came from JC's old apartment. They happen to work perfectly for us. And then anchoring the dining table, we've got these great white canopy lights from Kitchler as well. And of course, we've got this massive, beautiful picture window from Renewal by Anderson. From the dining area, we've got our little transition hallway here. Very much like the entry space, we pulled this wall back as well. So being as this is the main communal area of the home, we wanted to have a very open feel to this little hallway area, which is also the access to the powder room, which is a super fun space. You know I like to take my chances in the powder room. We went with another amazing wallpaper. This one is by Hoogan West. We've got the light fixture and the mirror, both by Kitchler and we continued with our Kohler fixtures throughout. And last, but certainly not least, the basement, which is under the core of the home where we're standing right now, has a really skinny door. There was not much I could do about it because I didn't want to have to replace the existing staircase that was here. So rather than put the door back in there and make it super obvious, we used that view of the woods wallpaper from Juju Papers under here. Mike from John Rittner's crew cut this solid core door perfectly in here, put it on a magnet, and gives us a little 
secret door that goes to the basement. So that gets us into the home. There is a lot more to come. I can't wait to share the rest of this space with you guys. Uh, from here, we will be going into the living room. This season on The Build TV, we go room by room to show you what it takes to convert this stone house into my mountain escape. Holy sh I'm so excited. Subscribe or follow at thebuild.tv to make sure you don't miss any episodes.